Welcome back to the Gary Sutton Show. You know, we talk an awful lot today with the Tea Party people and people looking back on our our founding and wondering what this Constitution is all about and is it still applicable today. Uh, and a lot of people talk about our founding fathers. And I am one of those guys who's fascinated by the founding fathers. All those people who put their lives on the line in the early going and went out and said, we're going to we're gonna get this new country started the right way. Uh, the first time that we tried to do that, we put together the Articles of Confederation. And they were done right here in New York, Pennsylvania. Yes, they were. That's where we, were, we arrived at them. Um, but they didn't work. We tried them from 1780 to 1788, and they didn't work too well. They had a lot of cumbersome parts to them, didn't really have a strong executive branch. Uh, there were a lot of things where you had to have unanimous approval to get things done, and it just didn't work that well. And so we had a meeting a little bit later on down in Annapolis, and we decided we'd have another meeting later on the next year in Philadelphia to try to correct some of these things, try to make them better. Still kind of keep the Articles of Confederation, but try to correct some of these things. Um, so the next year we met in Philadelphia uh, as a group uh, to try to come up with these, and there was a lot of arguing when they first started because there were so many things that weren't right with the Articles of Confederation. And so we decided that uh, maybe it was time to scrap it, and we try to put something else together. One of the guys that came to this particular meeting uh, was named James Madison. And uh, James Madison is a very interesting guy because you don't hear a lot about him, and yet he is known as the father of the American Constitution. Yes, he is. Uh, he is a guy who came to that meeting with a plan for government that probably no one else had as much in totem. There were people who came with ideas, but not with a whole plan for a brand new government called a constitutional way of doing it. And James Madison, is, is to me, is one of the guys that we lose in history sometimes and don't talk enough about. He became the fourth president of the United States eventually in 1809 and was there for two terms till 1817. He was a very modest man. Most people say he didn't talk a lot on the outside, but when he did, he was very clear, uh, very succinct. We, we read about him in the Federalist Papers where he explains what the Constitution meant and how they arrived at some of the things that they did. The Constitution is known as a bundle of compromises, and Madison is one who helped to work these things through and help them to arrive at this form of government, which, amazingly, we are still using today, over 200 and some years afterward. Now, I, I talk about James Madison here um, because he's a champion, not only of the United States Constitution, he also was the key champion in getting through the United States Bill of Rights, the very rights that we stand by today in our system of law and the way we live in this country. And then he went out and he sold the Constitution out around the... Uh, the states at that time, through the Federalist Papers, where he and Alexander Hamilton both um, collaborated to talk about how the Constitution was to be seen, how they came to a lot of the things they came to, and um, what it was going to mean to people now and in the future. And I mentioned James Madison today, the father of the Constitution, our fourth president of the United States, um, a member of the Constitutional Convention, because... There's a brand new book that has been written by Lynn Cheney, who is the wife of the president of the United or the vice president of the United States, uh, Dick Cheney, and she has written a number of books about all this. But we are going to be talking with her in just a moment here this morning about James Madison, the book out there, "A Life Reconsidered," and uh, I, it's a fascinating book. I'm in the process of reading it now. I've not yet finished the whole thing, but I'm I'm loving it. Okay. Lynn Cheney, by the way, is the author or co-author, and you probably didn't know this, of 12 books, including six best-selling children's books about American history. Uh, her most recent book before this one is We the People, the Story of Our Constitution. And, of course, she is the wife of former Vice President Dick Cheney. She lives in McLean, Virginia, and in Wilson, Wyoming, and she's going to be with us here in just a moment. And, and you talk about people who are important, Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, um, a lot of the founding fathers that we have, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, and you have to include James Madison in that particular group. And there are a lot of things that have been said about James Madison over the years, some of which are myth, some of which are true. And uh, we're going to find out about some of those things that uh, Mrs. Cheney has 
researched over the last four years on this book and writing this book. Um, things that maybe uh, you didn't know about with regard to a type of epilepsy that James Madison may well have had. And how he fit in, what he did to make sure that the Constitution really happened here for the United States. So James Madison is a guy we'll be spending some time with here in a few moments. And I'm kind of treading water right now because we've got her on the line. But we're getting, it, when, when you have these interviews, you've got to make sure that you get them all set in here the correct way and so forth. So uh, we'll be with that in just a moment. But, you know, I had the uh, chance to go down to uh, Mount Vernon a couple weeks ago. My wife and I were celebrating our anniversary. And we walked the estate of Washington. And it was amazing to stand there, the founding father, I call him, and, and walk inside his house, see the bed that he died in, see his chair that he used. Amazing stuff. Well, in this book, James Madison, A Life Reconsidered, I think Lynn Cheney takes us back to that time again. And we are proud to have this morning Mrs. Lynn Cheney on the Gary Sutton Show. Mrs. Cheney, great to have you on the show. Good morning to you. Well, thank you. It's an honor to be here. Before I, I wandered into this business to be a talk show host, I was a history teacher for 25 years. And one of the things I most loved oh. to teach was the Constitution. And, of course, uh, anybody that's ever taught the Constitution knows that James Madison is considered the father of the Constitution. So uh, you have a kindred spirit here on writing this book because I think here's a guy that we talk about a lot. And yet I don't know that we know as much about him in history as maybe we should. You know, he was a very interesting figure. He uh, uh, understood what... Uh, good politicians sooner or later do, that uh, being a little reserved, being a little reticent is a good thing. You don't want to run in contemporary terms for the television cameras, you know, and make the first statement on the unfolding situation because you'll almost always be wrong. Um, he understood that it was important to get the deed done rather than to get the credit. And uh, he's just a thoroughly admirable character, someone uh, who made uh, lifelong friends and uh, who actually uh, had uh, the most glamorous woman of the age as his wife. So what, a, what an interesting life to write about. It's interesting when you wrote about this that uh, along with Jefferson, Madison uh, helped to found the first political party in our country's history, the Democratic Republicans, or if you like, the Anti-Federalists, uh, who were for states' rights and uh, for less control from the central government. They just came out of fighting a revolutionary war. Talk a little bit about, uh, you know, his place in history right now in terms of just that alone. Well, you know, political parties then had an even worse reputation than now. <laughs> uh, yeah. The revolution wasn't that far behind. Um, and so people thought that the, that the government... Uh, shouldn't be attacked. You know, it was it was like attacking the revolution. But Madison saw, particularly once the um, uh, government was underway and Alexander Hamilton began to make his expansive views as Treasury Secretary clear, he thought the government could do just about anything. Uh, Madison understood that you needed to have a, a Opposition that a republic demanded opposition. Otherwise, you are no better than uh, a monarchy if you didn't have an opposing party. So he he legitimized that idea. He wrote editorials uh, anonymously about uh, political parties, and um, indeed, it was because of that, because of his early interest and in, and in Jefferson's uh, uh, backing, uh, that uh, we finally had a contested political election and uh, Jefferson. Won in 1800 and reversed the direction of the country. What was amazing in that election, too, in 1800 was we had how many different ballots before we ever actually got a president during that time? It was 30 something, wasn't it? Yes, it, it was. was uh, and at the, the end. The votes were tied exactly. So we, uh, Aaron Burr, everyone expected, would step aside since he'd basically been running for vice president. That's right. But instead of doing that, he contested the election with Jefferson and, and uh, you know, immediately became persona non grata in the uh, Jefferson administration once it was underway. Exactly right. And then at the end, they, uh, you know, they had to go to the uh, past the Electoral College there to actually get this whole thing done. I want to ask you, when we talk about Madison as the father of the Constitution, what was it that he did? I, and, and you do a great job in the beginning of your book, just in the prologue alone, of talking about how he came to the convention uh, – Many of them were going to try to just kind of correct the Articles of Confederation, which were written here originally in York, Pennsylvania, where we are. Uh, but they, they got there and they found that there was so much wrong with it that they had to really write something new. He came with the whole idea. Everyone else came with kind of ideas. It seemed like he came with the whole idea, right? You know, he was always the best prepared person at whatever gathering he was at. And.
and that was certainly the case at the convention. He had the agenda. He had been thinking for months and studying for years about how to make a republic succeed. Uh, mostly republics in the past, if uh, they if they had succeeded, they were small. There'd never been one that was uh, of great size, such as the United States was. So Madison had studied this issue, and he wrote the Virginia Plan, as it became known. Right. He got people uh, to uh, sign on to it before the convention started. Now, just think about how modern this is in, in political terms. I mean, it's not really because Madison was doing it, but we sort of think we've perfected this, and uh, uh, not really. It's a you know, it's it's an historical artifact. When you but look- so he got people to sign on, and uh, he didn't get everything he wanted. Right. But at the end, he concluded that he had gotten more, and uh, that the convention had arrived at more than anyone could have expected. Of course, 230-odd years later, we're still using the same document, which is incredible, although sometimes we wonder in modern-day politics if it's become a suggestion box instead of the supreme law of our land. Uh, he oh, went that's out, very good. Yeah, he went out and he, and, he, and he sold this to the American people, too. He had to go out, and so he and Hamilton put together a kind of an unlikely collaboration here to go out and sell this thing, and you write about that in your book as well. You know, I was talking to college students the other day and explaining that uh, there was one period in which Madison did the equivalent of writing a 10-page paper every other day. <laughs> now, you could do that, but he did that, and they became historically uh, transformative documents uh, to do that, you know, one every 10 days. They were writing the Federalist Papers so fast that uh, sometimes Madison or Hamilton was concluding the paper as the printer was setting the first words in uh, in print. So um, it, it was an amazing performance. I keep a copy of the it's Federalist Papers here. education. Yeah, it is. really is. I keep a copy of the Federalist Papers right here in front of me every day, and we're doing it because, you know, you go back and read, what were they thinking? Well, they'll tell you right there, and it's one of the great books, uh, one of the great uh, publications that you put out there. You also mentioned a little bit about his personal life, that uh, they talk a lot about epilepsy when they talk about uh, James Madison. What did you find out about that? Well, he said uh, toward the end of his presidency that he had suffered from sudden attacks somewhat resembling epilepsy. And this uh, manuscript has never been published and hasn't been paid much attention to. Uh, And when it has been paid attention to, people have suggested that he was a hypochondriac. I mean, for for no reason, I decided they... You know, sort of came up with that. So I did a lot of investigating. I read medical manuals of the time, talked to experts, uh, neurologists, and I think he probably had complex partial seizures, which are not the kind of uh, epileptic seizures that send you falling to the ground and and convulsing. But, you know, you're conscious is suspended, and that's exactly how he described it. So he probably had complex partial seizures. He learned to recognize them, and right in the middle of the Virginia Ratifying Convention, you can see him stop in the middle of a speech and say, I'll have to come back and finish later. And he leaves and goes to his boarding house, where I'm certain he suffered one of these seizures. And then he came back later to the convention and uh, you know, went on to uh, a great triumph over Patrick Henry, the great orator of the day. Right. So he, he had a debility, but he learned to live with it and, indeed, to uh, to triumph. Mrs. Cheney, what do you want people to walk away saying about this book, uh, James Madison, Life Reconsidered? Well, that it brings Madison to life, I hope, yes. uh, uh, that they'll say that. That it, it makes what the founders did, it puts it uh, in a context so we understand the, the greatness of their achievement. We're so fortunate to live in this country, and uh, it could have so easily have gone in another direction. I think the stories of, of why it didn't are, are important for us to know. And may I compliment you on the fact that when I've, I'm reading this book right now, and I'm really enjoying it, and, and you put it into a narrative where it does make him a real person you it make you know we're walking to various places we're staying at boarding houses we're doing those things and i think that's important instead of just saying here's what happened here's what happened here's what happened it does give movement to the to the story i think it's really really good we like to know about the people don't we yes the people behind great events i i know that when i read a book that's what i yearn to know about
And I remember I read about Ben Franklin uh, one time uh, that as part of the story was Ben Franklin and John Adams were sleeping in the same bed up in uh, New York at some thing they were going to, and they were complaining about keeping the window open or not keeping the window open. You do the same kind of thing here, I think, with James Madison, Life Reconsidered. Congratulations on the book. Well, thank you, and thanks for having me on today. Thank you so much, and we look forward to uh, reading it. I hope people get it out there. It's on Amazon.com and all the bookstores out there. A great book, James Madison, Life Reconsidered. Mrs. Cheney, thank you again. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Lynn Cheney with us here on the Gary Sutton Show. And uh, it, it's a neat book. If you get a chance, get out to the bookstores today. James Madison, Life Reconsidered. And it's really, really... Um, it, it, it makes him kind of a person. Instead of just talking about history, you'll like it. I'm Gary Sutton. We'll be right back here on the Gary Sutton Show on News Radio 910 WSBA.